off-duty Alaska airline pilot Joseph D. Emerson was accused of trying to disable the plane's engines mid-flight this past Sunday. Per reports, he tried to cut off the fuel by pulling a lever while sitting in the cockpit jump seat. Emerson was promptly escorted off the plane upon landing after being diverted to Portland. And according to records obtained by CNN, he admitted he had consumed psychedelic drugs, magic mushrooms, for the first time, 48 hours before the flight. Documents also reveal he had been up for 40 hours and he felt as if he was dreaming when he was in the cockpit. The plane's captain and first officer was successful in restraining him, convincing him to leave the cockpit where he had been sitting. Now, Tuesday, Emerson pled not guilty to 83 felony counts of attempted murder, 83 counts of reckless endangerment, and one count of endangering an aircraft. Prosecutors ultimately only charged him with one count of interfering with flight crew members in attendance. Alaska Airlines released a statement about the incident, writing, quote, he was approved to join the flight as a passenger and was seated in the flight deck jump seat. All gate agents and flight attendants are trained to identify signs and symptoms of impairment. They confirmed he was relieved of all duties. So this is a, a story that has been talked about a lot. On I, I like heard it on local radio. Uh, it has a lot of people caught their interest. Um, Look, I, I mean, I don't know what, what if the charges are necessarily will fit the crime, but you can't just let somebody get off for that. That's a very bad thing to do. And, and the rest of us are so policed about how we get on airplanes. You hear me complain about it a lot. You know, my feelings on the subject of TSA and everything. So the pilot's got to be held to, like, at least the same standard. Yeah, so to be clear, he was riding as a passenger. This is something that happens when passengers, when um, pilots just have to get from point A to point B. They are sometimes allowed to ride in with a jump seat in like a side, like a side seat in in the um, cockpit, and he has to. You have to go through TSA and everything like everybody else. It's not as though he came in with a weapon or came in with an illegal substance. He had just taken the drugs beforehand, and having never taken them, he says, before, and not knowing how it was going to manifest. That it can make you paranoid and crazy and... Yeah. So he said that he thought he was dreaming and started pulling things, thinking it would wake him up. And to be clear, this is a kind of a funny story, but only because it didn't turn out very badly. Apparently... Um, because the Alaska Airlines said in a statement on Monday, this is from New York Times, that because some residual fuel remained in the line and because of the quick reaction of our crew, it didn't go worse. If Emerson had successfully pulled the engine shutoff handles down all the way, then it would have shut down the hydraulics and the fuel to the engines, turning the aircraft into a glider within seconds. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yes. Really terrifying. Yes. Um, so it sounds like he, he understood at some point that he was out of control, telling a flight attendant um, after he left the cockpit, you need to cuff me right now or it's going to be bad. Um, after Mr. Emerson was restrained in the back of the plane, he tried to grab the handle of an emergency exit door but was stopped by a flight attendant, federal prosecutor yeah. said. This is about, what I find interesting about this is this is pretty much the only way that a passenger can like can compromise and take down the plane post 9-11. Like all of the security th measures we've put, most of them, the vast majority, do not do anything. They do not matter. The You remember the underwear bomber and those? There's, there's not a quantity of explosives that they can carry through. And, and anyway, actually, the components to assemble an incendiary device are available in most airports after you've gone through mm -hmm. um, airport security. You can make a Molotov cocktail if you don't. <laughs> not, I don't want to get this video taken down. It's possible to do. Um, uh, but the major improvement to airplane security post 9-11 is that the cockpit door locks. They didn't used to do that. When they took over the planes on 9-11, they were able to actually storm the cockpit. Now the, the, the door's sh shut. It's locked. You can't get in there. There's... With, no, it would, take, it would take an atom bomb to blow open that door. Uh, so the only way is if someone's already in the cockpit and means, and means harm to the plane. That's why the most likely explanation for the disappearance of that uh, Malaysia Airlines flight, which you know, really has captured uh, people's imaginations for so long, and the Atlantic had a good, years ago, really good explanation of what probably happened. What probably happened is the pilot just crashed it mm. because that's basically the only way the plane can go down. So this is something, to, long way of saying this is something to take very seriously. Yeah, there is a really excellent series on uh, Apple TV called Hijack uh, with Idris Elba. Mm -hmm. Not my kind of show, but I was 
sucked it. It was so good. And they had to solve the problem mm. of how a plane got hijacked when the doors are locked. And what they did was they made it to the pilot. One of the pilots was having an affair with a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. And they threatened the flight attendant's life. And the pilot broke down and opened the door like an idiot. But an idiot that gave us seven hours of really excellent TV. So <laughs> you know, They used to. Um, it, it's funny because uh, I mean, part of the reason on, that 9-11 happened, that the, the terrorists taking over the plane were, were listened to, were the passengers cooperated with, is because in the history of like aviation up until then, there were actually like a lot of plane hijackings. Usually just meant somebody was taking you to Cuba, and mm -hmm. no, nobody had the intention of crashing the plane. So mm -hmm. the kind of uh, standard operating procedure was to just let the hijackers do what they want, and it's in inconvenience, mm -hmm. but it was not, a, it, it was not a, th a threat to anyone on board. I think, actually, I read that the U.S. government considered building, because there were so many um, like leftists, I think, activists, communist activists who wanted to go to Cuba, that the U.S. government considered building a fake an airport that would look like the Cuban Air for, uh, airport just in southern <laughs> Florida, so they, they could pretend to land somewhere else. And then, and then what always would happen to the communists when they'd land in Cuba is that they're arrested by the Cubans and presumed to be U.S. spies and probably tortured. So it was not good for them, but it was, not a, it, it was, a, it was a problem that, just, that people would just cooperate with until, yeah. until we had this thing happen. Yeah, well, I'm sure this was going to really change or affect the conversation that's been ongoing about the kind of therapeutic value of um, There's that aspect of it. mushrooms. It's been gaining a lot of traction as a legitimate way to treat a number of psych psychiatric disorders. It's unclear for what purpose um, yeah. this guy took drugs, recreational or mental health. But it certainly doesn't go uh, into the positive score pile for no. these things. Are, right. <laughs> these things are good for professionals to, to be on. But of course, you know it's a dosage right. issue. Well, and I support. I absolutely support legalizing all drugs. I think it should be your choice what you put in your body. But just let. But you can't. You, you, you can't then drive a car. You right. can't then get on an airplane and cause an incident. Um, or maybe this will change some policies about whether pilots should ride in jump seats or whether or not. Yeah. Uh, if you're, I mean, he is off duty, right? It wasn't as though yeah. he took the drug intending to fly. So maybe if the same precaution, you know, you should just have anyone in the cockpit not under influence, even if they're just uh, riding side saddle, as it were. Yeah. Well, we will continue to follow interesting stories like this. <laughs> that does it for us this week on Rising. Tomorrow, Jessica Burbank and Amber Athey will be back to bring you Friday's biggest news. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, you're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. We are getting into Halloween party mode. We are. I, I wore a little orange and on theme because I know what a holiday lover you are, Robbie. Check social media for some fun <laughs> pictures in the next few days. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.